You have been using game programming tutorials the wrong way, and they are making you worse at programming. Most game programming tutorials teach you quick and easy ways to code a feature. Doing things the quick and easy way now almost always makes things slower and harder in the future. Writing code is the easy part of programming, and tutorials show you how to do the easy part. When a studio hires engineers, they aren't looking for code monkeys. They want someone who can develop creative solutions to hard problems. The hard work of programming is solving problems, and this work begins before you write your first line of code. Problem solving is the most important skill for you to develop as a programmer. When you're faced with a programming problem, you should try to solve it with paper and pen before you watch a tutorial. After you've either solved the problem or have been stuck on the problem for an hour, you should ask for help or search for a tutorial and compare your solution to theirs. Game programming tutorials don't teach you how to identify or solve problems because that's not as exciting as writing code that works. Instead, they give you code that will become a problem for you in the future. For example, most game programming tutorials teach you to write code with tight coupling and a low cohesion. Ideally, your code should have loose coupling and high cohesion, which is the opposite. Unless you've taken computer science classes, you've probably never even heard of coupling and cohesion. These two concepts are closely related and have to do with the design of your classes. Cohesion describes how closely related the members of your class are with one another. According to the single responsibility principle, each class should be responsible for one thing. Does your class have methods or variables that are unrelated to this responsibility? This may also violate something called the interface segregation principle. Interface doesn't mean graphical user interface in this context. Interface refers to how classes interact. Classes shouldn't have methods or variables they don't need. For example, an invisible wall will never be rendered or animated, so it shouldn't have methods or variables for rendering static meshes or playing animations. The quick and easy way to create a player is to cram everything about the player into a single class with several responsibilities. Let's say that we have a player class that has a health variable, a take damage method, an attack method, an attack cooldown variable, and an attack power variable. We have two sets of related elements grouped under two responsibilities. We could improve cohesion by splitting this class into two highly cohesive classes. We can split this into a class that is responsible for taking damage and a class that is responsible for dealing damage. This gives us two classes that can be used by our player object, but they can also be used by any object that can take damage or deal damage. And this leads us to the idea of creating modular components that different objects can make use of. But if we create several tightly coupled components, we're going to be even worse off. Coupling describes how much the details of one class depend upon the details of another class. Two classes are tightly coupled if one or both classes depend upon the details of the other class. Tight coupling is a problem because changes to one class can require changes in other classes. If you're writing code in Unity, how many of your classes are directly referencing the game manager to access a method or a variable? This tight coupling to your game manager means that every one of those classes will potentially need to change if you make changes in your game manager. This becomes exponentially worse in the future as more classes depend on each other. This future cost is called technical debt. The longer you wait to pay off your project's technical debt, the harder and more expensive it is to pay off. The process of loosening the coupling between classes is called decoupling, and we can pull this off by using the dependency inversion principle. 
Your classes shouldn't depend on the concrete details of other classes, especially if the implementation of those details might change. Instead, your classes should depend on abstractions, and we're going to use something very similar to an abstract base class. An abstract base class describes what a class is without specifying implementation details. A health component and an attack component are components. We don't want to reference another class by what it is, but instead reference it by what it can do. A character and a red barrel can do something when their health reaches zero. Interfaces allow us to promise behaviors without specifying implementation details. If you want to define an interface for objects that can take damage, you might name that interface iDamageable or iHealth. Building game objects out of components and interfaces makes it easier to adhere to the single responsibility principle and the interface segregation principle. This can speed up the development of your game by reducing code duplication, loosening coupling, and increasing the cohesion of your classes. This also allows you to create modular decoupled components that designers can use to construct objects. Your code doesn't have to be perfect, but you should pay attention to what parts of your game are taking longer to change and update. If any part of your game is becoming a pain to change or update, then it's probably time to pay off some of your technical debt. Now that you know when to use components and interfaces, you should watch this fast-paced tutorial to learn how to create them in Unreal Engine.